Welcome to MRE Uncut, where we'll give you real and practical insights into the real estate scene in Melbourne. We'll discuss what's happening in the industry, all backed by MRE's history of over 30 years in the game. With that said, let's jump into this week's episode of MRE Uncut. Welcome back to another MRE podcast. My name's Stephen Fitzsimon, and today I have two lovely guests. I have Laura Moody, who is the Head of Training and Development at MRE. Hello. And I've also got Louisa Raphael, one of our uh, Senior Property Managers at MRE. Hello, hello, hello. They've both been on podcasts before. You may recognise <laughs> the voices and the names. Um, I'm spoiled to have them both with us today. And the topic for today's discussion was the announcement this recently this, the, the, of the second batch of minimum standards that the government is looking at introducing um, for rental properties. And I was sort of sat on my backside when I read this, not because I didn't know that some of it was coming, but just because they are putting together a second set of minimum standards that will end up costing investors thousands of dollars to comply with if they have a older property primarily. Yep. And the older properties for me are normally the lower socioeconomical properties for tenants. And that means that the rent's going to go up in those properties in the middle of a housing crisis. And I don't have too many requests from our renters that are in these properties at the moment complaining about a lot of these requests for minimum standards improvements. So I just don't know what they're doing. No. So I, I actually did quite a lot of research into the minimum standards. So the whole reason this has come about is because of the government's promise for the net zero em emissions by 2045. So, they, they, so just get me right, this net zero emissions, so they need to have blind cord safety anchors. So that is one of the, so they've got, um, properties have to meet a certain energy efficiency yep. and then they also have to be safe homes. Com completely yeah. agree with safe homes, completely agree. agree with that. I'm being a bit sarcastic. Your comment on blinds <laughs> though, it's quite interesting that they're saying that that's a minimum standard because it's actually been a minimum standard since 2000, December, 30th of December, 2010. Under the Trade Practices Law, Consumer Product Safety Standard. Oh, nice. So it's already in place. So if your property doesn't have it and you've had blinds installed after that date, well, you need to get it done. Another little tip is Consumer Affairs. If you jump on their website, you can order free kits and get 10 little safety devices to install in your home. Oh, I like that one. Perfect. Free kits. That's good. Yeah. So we'll have to put the link uh, for the free kits in the uh, comments section under the I don't know what it is, but, you know, down there. <laughs> Definitely. I'm um, not going to pretend I'm one of those gurus. But, okay, so so let's have a look at them, right? So I've got I've got a few things here. Um, we've got blind cord safety anchors. So let's get an understanding. They're the chains that hang off your blinds and they go down yep. and they don't want little kids choking on them. 100%. So they've got them, they sort of screw them into the wall and They're that fixed. holds them there. And we all think yep. that that is logical, common sense, should get done. It, it'll go into legislation. Yeah. They're yeah. talking here of having it, the trigger for compliance the 30th of October 2025. So my tip number one out of all of this is if you're going to your rental property or a handyman is going to your rental property, any time between now and October 2025, they should put in the little um, clip things that you can get free from Consumer Affairs yeah. or cheaply yeah. at Bunnings. Yeah, exactly right. Start doing it now. It's probably the quickest and easiest one out of the list to get done. Yeah. So that's, that's I think, is just – a no-brainer. I don't think anyone's going to kick up a fuss. Bit of a pain in the backside in terms of um, getting it done, but I think nobody will have an issue with it because it's cheap and easy. The next one we look at um, was ceiling insulation. And I get it that ceiling insulation makes properties more comfortable to live in, um, but I don't think it'd be super cheap. Definitely not. And whilst I understand that um, during winter, having ceiling insulation is of benefit and, and also during summer, but to a lesser effect. The, I, I'm sort of sitting there going, is this our number one priority that we've got in terms of rental homes in Melbourne? Yeah, because it's just going to drive the prices up. Yes, the prices will go down for renters when it comes to their electricity and their gas bills, 
But the owner is going to be having to fork out between three to 6000 for a small home. Um, I actually looked into it. Apartment buildings are only exempt if the space between your apartment and the one above is common property. Not all apartments no. are common property through there, so owners will have to look at doing ins- insulation unless the OC rules say no, which well, lucky not in these the are proposals because so, we've got it. This is the other side of it. They're, these are proposed, and they're and in fairness to the government, they haven't said these are the rules. They're they're asking for submissions until July, and then they're going to review them, and then they're going to make a decision in in October. So we've got to make these stipulations. So we're going to, at MRE, we're going to create a um, thing. I spoke or I emailed the uh, the president of the REIV today to try and get an industry-wide communication piece that of, of an understanding of this because I don't think that the last introduction of the minimum standards went well. Definitely um, not. No, and, I don't and I think, think enough needs- people put in um, their recommendations on what the standards should be. Yeah, I don't yes, think a lot of people the standards, took them as serious as well, what it was. Well, the impact was enormous. Yeah. And the impact, as we've sort of seen with the conversations that we've had in past episodes with people like Detector Inspector who are out there trying to comply with a lot of the minimum standards, that um, the gas and electrical checks are being rorted. And, and then on top of that, you've got ones that don't make any sense, like you've got a a beautiful view outside your living room windows um, with nobody looking in. You've got to put, got to put block out blinds to stop darkness from coming into a living area. Otherwise, it's a criminal offence because you haven't met minimum standards and rented it to a property. Like mm-hmm. what the hell is going on there? Yeah, it's almost like somebody who probably doesn't have their own investment properties has decided what they think the rules should be and haven't really gone out to the public and been like, okay, well, what is it that people want in these rental properties that are, they're after? I, I find it I find it alarming because I, I think the biggest thing that we have in common is that we all want good, safe homes. Of course. We yeah. just don't want things that don't make a whole lot of sense. Insulation, I think, is great, but during a rental crisis, when the owners have got to chip another three to six thousand dollars in to 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 fixing that, mate, I know where that's going. The owners are already mm-hmm. on our backs trying to get every cent out of a rent increase when the once a year opportunity comes around for them to increase the rent because their their holding costs have skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. It's just going to see more properties go up for sale because owners are going to say, that's it, we've had enough. Yeah. Which means more properties up for sale, less properties up for rent. Housing crisis is just going to get worse. Yeah. And, you know, they can't build properties as fast as the population grows. And, and so, look, I don't want to. I'm <laughs> We're not going there. I heard that on the news. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole argument about those properties being delayed now, but <laughs> that's yeah. another podcast in its own. It is. Um, but with the ceiling insulation, because I, I actually read through all of the standards and the actual regulations that are being put forward, it's not only you've got to put the insulation in, you have to pay for an electrical certificate. Um, compliance check that comes with it that's going to cost more than $1,000 for them to check that it's fire safe, the electrical cords in the ceiling are all safe. So owners have already been paying for electrical checks. Now they've got to do a whole nother step inside ceiling cavities. Yeah, I want to understand what that electrical check looks like. These are the conversations that you've got to have with the electricians out there to actually see what they look like. And then right now they're not checking the uh, gas and electrical checks that are being done. So how are they going to stop a dodgy electrician just signing off on a ticket and saying, yeah, it's fine, and then somebody's going up in the roof and, and going back to Pink Bat scam where, mm. where they all yeah. got electrocuted. So that was yeah. horrible. Yeah, because there's no – that's unfortunately one thing with the ceiling installation. There is no government rebate at the moment. They're looking into what they could propose, but until they say there's anything, there's nothing there to help owners with that big cost and how do you know you're not going to get somebody's flyer – they come in and do it and it's dodgy exactly. and you start a fire. Well, that's yeah. what's happened like, a few it's years not a safe back. home. Yeah. So challenges. Yeah. We've got cooling in there that they're talking now you've got to have an air conditioner in the, in, in the property. And I was sitting there going, well, my mother-in-law, she's Italian, lives in Italy, <laughs> stinking hot. She's got a top floor apartment and I've offered to buy her an air conditioner and she refuses because she thinks that they make you sick. 
Yeah, so, so, that plenty so of times, exactly. So. You know, like Italian <laughs> backgrounds, it's it's, yep. it's fantastic. The Greeks, the Italians, they tell you, no, 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 makes you sick. You know, and you know, and and you know, there's all YouTube things on it, and all that. So everyone takes the the Mickey out of them. But the reality is, some people don't like air conditioning. Exactly right. So right. now, even though they don't want it, they're in a rental property. They've been living there for 15 years. They're completely happy. They're they're you know they don't want a rent increase. Now they're going to have knock, knock, knock. Oh, we've got to put an air con in. Um, it's going to cost the owner two and a half grand to put it in, you know, uh, minimum. Minimum, uh, exactly. Exactly, yeah. uh, minimum. And um, and so now you're going to have to uh, uh, cop this rent increase to be able to compensate the owner for this additional expense for something you don't want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also there's going to be a star rating on it um, and the star rating has to be, I think it was above two, 3%, three stars that I read. Um, so what happens with all those evaporative coolers that work perfectly well and they're two stars by 2027, they all have to meet the star rating. So there's, Ugh. there's all these, if you go into it, there's more layers that they've put onto it. Some of the layers will benefit owners. Other ones, you need to research it to understand it before you go doing these changes. So it's going to be fun. Like, you know, and, and then they, they provide us with, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm, I'm looking at just the information that I could find on consumer affairs, the engage.vic.gov.au, uh, new minimum standards page. And I was reading through and they've got all of the legislation, but they don't have a practical guide that is easy for a mum and dad investor to be able to go, okay, well, I'm self-managing. What do I need to do in relation to this? You know, they're, they're, I, I can't see anything there. Yet they're asking for consultation and feedback in relation to it. The next one that got me was draft proofing. And I thought this is fascinating because in an earlier podcast we had uh, the mold doctor on, and we speak constantly to to other mold operators like the mold men, who um, talk to us about how in apartments one of the biggest problems that they've got is a lack of ventilation, mm-hmm. and in here they're saying in the draft proofing that you've got to seal all the windows, all the doors, and all those little vents that are around the walls of these places if you've got um, fluable heating, in, you know, in in the property. So if they've pulled out the electric heater or the gas heater that was in the lounge and put in a split system, now they're saying you've got to close off the vents. As it was yeah. my understanding of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to close off the vents in those apartments as well to meet the draft proofing category. But that's just going to mean that the humidity inside those rooms is going to skyrocket and more mold, more mold, more mold. Yep. Going to be a vicious cycle. Yeah. So we've got to get, we should buy the mold men and, you know. Like <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. There's businesses like that are going to thrive during our, our um, colder months. Um, they have put in the fine print with that one. So they go into the detail about the window frames, wall lining, skirtings, um, and they do say un, unreasonable gaps and holes based on measuring. So there is allowed to be a certain gap or hole, yeah. but they haven't set out what the measurement is yet. So that'll be the the kicker. Is it yeah. a little hairline crack sort of yeah, gap, well, or what is it? So and and how does how does an individual recognise that? Like you know, I'm thinking I'm a mum and dad investor. I've got an investment property that I self manage, and uh, how am I supposed to go out there with them uh, with a you know get up on a ladder into the top corner of the roof and look whether or not that crack meets the draft proofing standards? It's it's starting yeah. to get a bit funny. It goes on to then heating. So we're talking about uh, heating. Well, we've already sort of been working on that pathway. I didn't investigate that too much. Did you get any key takeaways with the heating, Laura? Uh, yeah. So um, that one will be going up. It'll keep on the your two stars and above, which is fine because we've already had that implemented. Owners have started installing these. Now, I've recently moved into a property where the owner had clearly upgraded to gas heaters to yep. be the two star rating and above. One unit I've worked, I looked at online, is three and a half. The other one was about two. So he spent over five grand. They want to phase out gas. So those gas heaters that he's gone and spent all this money on, as like they're gone. He, he doesn't have to install them now. And that's where you've got to look in the fine print. It says that you've got to do it um, at the expiry of the heater's life. So these owners that have gone and installed these heaters, They've got the life of that heater. It's not until it dies that yep. they then have to replace it. So that is Thankfully. one benefit, but it just means they have to start planning now on the cost because to go from gas to electrical is expensive because you need a gas plumber to cap, you need the electrician to come in. So there is quite a bit to it. 
they have to start planning throughout the years, okay, this is how much we've got to put away, which is... Where do you get that from? Where do they get yeah. it from? They're already down well, so much I've with their investment property. to actually get one of them done and they're not cheap. We're looking at it about for just one appliance, nearly a thousand bucks for just one appliance. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. It, one that one that I like um, here is shower heads. Like I, I find this fascinating, right? Because I understand, like if we if we look at shower heads, no one wants to use more water. I don't know about you guys, but when I get the water bill, the first thing I look at is, am I under the one fifty five? Do you know what I mean? Because that's my target, and and I, we're good, right? I, we're we're hovering in my family at about the one twenty five. 130. And I don't know if that's because we don't wash enough or because I'm really <laughs> hard on the kids when I'm saying get out of the bloody shower the first thing in the morning because it because yeah. we've all got to churn through. But the bit that I find you know, funny as such is that if you own a really expensive home and you've got a beautiful waterfall shower nozzle as a feature of your $150,000 bathroom renovation, You've now got to remove that and put on uh, what is it a three star or something? Well, no, <laughs> so the the current minimum standards they implemented the three stars. So all owners have gone out and spent money to do their three star shower heads. It's now being increased to four stars. Yeah, great. So they have to spend after two years they've got to replace their shower head with another one. So it's yeah, it's almost like another money making scheme for the G G tax. So, yeah, Perfect. yeah. There's, are, the, are there's, just, the, there's the government's money. Like, yeah, is it going to trade uh, to fund all of the plumbers out there for changing yeah. shower hoses on them? And you, you sort of sit there and you go, okay, so how many properties that have been completed in the last ten years are going to have three star? Was it three star? Now they're four three star. Three star going mm -hmm. to four. But also, you say that you, with the kids, you tell them to get a shower. You you're happy with that star rating. Majority of renters. They want the lower star rating because they want that water pressure. Yeah, well, this is they want to okay. stand in the shower in winter and, get and, have, wet. To, and yeah. have the water coming out. They want to wash out all that shampoo one. from the hair. Exactly. Those <laughs> higher star ratings, the amount of times renters complain that the pressure is not enough and it's like, well, we can't change that for yeah, you. And the, and, the, and the bit that I look at is like I know that environmentally we're, we're making a choice in relation to the consumption of water and we pay for that through the consumption of water. But this is this is like one of those instances where you're sitting there and your tenant is happy to pay for it, but they can't have it. And if your tenant wants to have a, a shower rose, if I go to Bunnings, I can get a cheap shower rose and chuck it on. It costs five bucks and I can be or ten bucks, fifty let's call it twenty bucks, right? <laughs> And, and I can and I can save water by having the the, the sprinkle of water that comes out of the the shower roses, and you can do that. And if you want to do that, that's brilliant. But here you don't have a choice. Yeah, you, you've you, you've got to then go and buy a different shower rose to take off the one that's in there because that's what they're going to do. If you, if you've got the money and you want the shower, they're going to change the shower rose and then they're going to put it back at the end of the tenancy. So I'm sort of sitting there going, how's that actually going to work? But then if the tenants are changing it. Does that mean it doesn't meet minimum standards? Oh, no. So there's it's but just... the, the same thing we've got. If we go back to the draft proofing, right? Yeah, you've got requirements on ventilation, and I don't know how that's going to work either, because you've got to main, make sure that the place is adequate ventilation. But now you're draft proofing it. Yeah, like it, I just think that they're so grey that who is going to define it, and then who's going to enforce it? Do you know what I mean? How's like, it, how it going to be enforced? This is the bit that I don't understand. How are they going to enforce that that this stuff is done in this way, other than getting tenants and getting them to dob in their owners, which is going to break down that relationship? Then they're going to be out on their their ear, um, and the every rent increase is going to be right to the top of market. Gone mm -hmm. are the owners who are going to be sitting there and going, "Oh, look, they're great tenants. I'm going to look after them. I'm not going to increase the rent this year. It's they've been fantastic. They're really looking after the property." And now they're going to be like, "Oh, I'll stuff them!" Like you know, if they're going to ask me to have a ridiculous shower head or or put um, sealant around all of the windows that have been perfectly fine for the last sixty years and no one's complained, um, then I'm then I'm going to have to do it. So I'm like, pulling my hair. <laughs> the last one. Was was hot water, and hot water is fascinating. So they're, they're saying now. It, correct me if I'm wrong here. That what, what I read, and and I might have gotten this wrong, but what I read was that 
when your gas hot water service that's outside cracks it, so end of its life, they want you to replace with one of those heat pumps. With all the electrical. And the, and the uh, solar, what do you call yeah. it, solar boosting or whatever it is. Yeah. And they're not cheap. No, they're so not cheap. So most new builds now, depending on on the property, new builds actually can't have gas hot water systems. Yeah. They're all going with the electrical. But I'm sitting there and I'm going, like we our um, hot water service died uh, two weeks ago and it was going to be roughly 1800 bucks um, for a, a replacement electric hot water service, um, and it was going to be three thousand six hundred with an eight hundred dollar rebate for a um, for a, a heat pump, right? And we were sitting there going, "Well, you get an eight hundred dollar rebate, and then you save money through the use of it because they're more efficient." And I'm like, "Yeah, but eighteen hundred bucks and two thousand eight hundred." I'll take the eighteen hundred, thanks. Yeah, uh, like it's a thousand bucks, and it's going to take a lot of hot showers before I get my thousand bucks back. Yeah. Now that's just me on my own home, as opposed to an owner who's purchased an investment property, and they're going to be forced to spend more money than they are comfortable spending, and significantly more that is than that is there. Mm -hmm. And then I haven't even got into this. That's a hell of a lot more than the two and a half thousand for the minimum. Um, yeah. uh, what do you call it? The minimum. Uh, minimum uh, urgent repairs. Urgent, urgent repairs. repairs. Yeah. So if yeah. you've got to replace it, you replace it with a heat pump. How are you going to do it with three and a half grand? <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, it's yeah. a can of worms. So nonetheless, so I, I, I'm looking at this. Did you guys get any more like gooey bits that sort um, of like. Probably Stink. just those bits that I went over. I think the main issue is, yes, they're saying that it's a staged one. So, yeah, you've got your heating that you've got the life. So you could get another 10 or so, years, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Maybe you don't, though. What happens to the owner that all of these are coming up within the next one or two mm. years? Yeah. They're looking at potentially 15000 on this property. They already can't afford to pay their mortgages because interest rates haven't settled for them. Yeah. Rental prices, it is so much – I know – People might blast me for this, but it is cheaper to be in a rental property than it is to even own your own home, let alone own an investment property with the cost of living. 100% It's agree. just not affordable. So rents are going to skyrocket. We're going to see rental increases. Yes, we had big jumps because we were recovering from COVID and all those rents came back. They're going to jump even more because we're going to lose investment properties in the market and owners are going to need to recover their costs. So as soon as that property comes vacant, when the renter says, I want to leave, they're going to go, well, you know what? Market's this. I need to go at this. Yeah. I have to. I can't mm -hmm. go any lower. We're hearing that already. Yeah. yeah. And, we're already and, you know, hearing I, the pain. I, how much can you get me? This type of thing. So you recognize that it's pain and you, the, the challenge that I, I sort of, and this is, this is the bit that I reiterate, the we're getting a lot of people that are moving out of home and buying rental properties that have been sold and they weren't even in the tenant pool. No. They moved out of in. home and mm -hmm. they're buying an investment they're buying what was an investment property. So that's just one person out of home and one less piece of housing stock. And they talked about recently there were 15,000 or so fewer um, bonds um, in the last year. I reckon that's very little. I think it's <laughs> getting a lot worse. I think before it'll be hundred percent Because even our renters, like I would always have renters saying, oh, yeah, I'm buying an investment property or I've got this investment property. Gone are the days that even renters have investment properties. Yeah. Yeah. And some people choose to rent not because of the money, but they might want to live in a different city for two years. Like they want to move that flexibility to move around. It's taking away that. They then can't afford to have their own investment property so that they can have flexible work life or living life. And where do students live? Well, yeah. Where, where do you live before you, when you moved out of home and before you buy, nothing's going to solve the problem that you've got to come up with 20%. No, it's, it's going to be hard. And We've got some challenges. Um, we'll rant again on another day. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there is a lot there. On. Louisa, Steve. Laura, thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Pleasure to have this. Speak soon.